two minutes from now, you'll be reading ancient Hebrew, and you don't believe me, do you? This will be the easiest lesson you've ever had in your life. We're going to start with the hardest part first. If you can get this one part down, everything else is easy. Are you ready? You read Hebrew from right to left. How do you read Hebrew? It's not backwards. It came first. What does that tell you about English? It explains it. <laughs> now comes the easy part, reading the ancient Hebrew letters. And the reason they are so easy is because we get our letters from the ancient Hebrew Phoenician alphabet. Now, if you look at modern Hebrew, you will not see the connection. But if I take you back to the letters that King David and Moses could have recognized and read, you can read them. Here we go. What side are we going to start on? Take this letter, turn it. What does it become? A. A. Turn it. B. B. C. D. E. e. You are now fully qualified. You know everything you need to know. How's that feel? You're doing great, aren't you? Because the first two letters spell a Hebrew word. Now you would never read A, B as a word in English, would you? You'd put it together to make one sound for a word. Can you do that in Hebrew? These two letters spell the Hebrew word. I'm hearing it. Ab, ab, ab. Three choices, right? This is the Ab of Abraham, the Ab of Abba. What does Abba mean? Now look what happened in less than two minutes. You not only read the word, you told me what it meant. How's that for the start of your first Hebrew lesson? There are two ways to write a language, with sounds and with pictures. English is written in sounds. We read the sound of a word, don't we? Chinese is written with pictures. The word for man in Chinese shows you the picture of a man standing up. The word for big, the picture of that same man with his arms out wide. Personally, I've always thought that this should mean fisherman or liar. Both ways work, don't they? Sounds and pictures. But you have to choose one, right? Except Hebrew. Hebrew does what no other language can do. Because in Hebrew, every letter is a sound. You've just read them. And every letter is a picture. And I'm going to show you how to read the pictures of the word Ab, Abba, Father. The first two letters are called Aleph, Bet. They sound familiar, don't they? Only Aleph is the ancient Hebrew word for an ox. Can you see the picture of the head of the ox? Ears, horns, and nose. You already know what Bet means? Bethel, the house of God. Bethlehem, the house of bread. Can you see the picture of a tent or a house? An older form showed you the floor plan of a house. Have you heard of the Alpha and Omega? That's a Greek way of saying a Jewish concept. The Aleph is what is first. It's even used in Hebrew for the number one. But it's the picture of an ox. And an ox symbolizes something. When you think of what an ox symbolizes, an ox is strength, strong. Let's read the picture. Hebrew tells us that God has called every father to be the strength or the leader of the Isn't that incredible? You just did what you should not be able to do. You just read one word both ways. The letters told you how to pronounce it, and you could read it. And the pictures gave you the meaning, the biblical meaning. And every word in Hebrew does both. Would you like to see Mother? Can you see the waves of water? Became our letter M. Ever heard the name Emma? It means mommy, Ima in Hebrew. A mother is the first water to the baby. She's the strong water. I live in Phoenix, Arizona, in the middle of the desert. This word I understand. Because where I live, where there's strong, abundant water, there is grass, trees, people, 
children. But if you take one step past the water, it is all gone. A mother is like water in the desert. She's the life giver. She's the nourisher. She's the water that makes the oasis. Are you ready for the second hardest part of your lesson? Are you afraid? <laughs> Do not turn this letter sideways. People want to because the A is sideways. Keep it straight up and down. What letter did it become? N. What did this become? A M N. Read me this word. You know it? Just say it out loud. You'll get it. All together. Amen. Amen is the Hebrew word for faithful. Every time you say amen, you're saying it's true, right, faithful, so be it. You can read the word. Let's read the picture. This is the Hebrew picture, something moving of action, of life. And Hebrew tells us that the best description of faithfulness can be seen in the picture of a mother's life. Is there anything more faithful than a mommy's life? Think about it. A mommy with a brand new baby at 2 in the morning, with a 2-year-old running for the street, with an 8-year-old, a 16-year-old, a 25, 45, 65-year-old. When does a mommy's love quit being faithful? Never. And that's why God says he loves you like a mommy loves her newborn baby with all of his heart, for all of your life. Do you see why I like Hebrew? I've taught you three things about Hebrew so far. Can you see that it's both a sound and a picture-based language? And if that wasn't enough, are you beginning to understand that it's also a relationship-based language? Who can make a language that would do all that? Let me show you a relationship in Hebrew. This is the Hebrew word for man or husband, woman or wife. Two of the letters are identical. We are a lot alike, but one letter is unique to each. We are distinctly different. You know that already, but Hebrew goes further and shows you what happens if you take the differences between men and women, husband and wife, and you combine them, unite them together as one. You spell God's name because the Bible says that God created man in his image, male and female created he them. The Talmud, the ancient Jewish scholars, tell us the reason these two words have this combination is because when it's done right, in a family, in a marriage, God's presence, his Shekinah, his glory, dwells there. That makes it equal to the Holy of Holies. But what happens if we take God out of this picture? 